What's up guys, Juicy Messi here and welcome to a brand new video and welcome to your daily dose of transfer gossip and today it's going to be Friday the 23rd of June. And I do say it every single time but we've got a lot to get through today, a lot of confirmed deals, a lot of really really good rumours. So before we get into that, as always you can show support by leaving a like rating, that'd be absolutely awesome. Remember, 1000 likes are tight for today's video. If you're new to my channel make sure to click that subscribe button for daily FIFA content and press the notifications tab next to it to receive notifications about my videos. If you missed yesterday's video will be down below in the description box and today's question today is regarding real life football. Who was your favourite player to watch as you were growing up? And my personal answer to that one has got to be Steven Gerrard. Let's jump into confirmed deals today. The very first player is an Arsenal player, and that's Takuma Asano, a Japanese striker. He signed about a year ago, I think it is. And last season, he spent out on loan to Stuttgart in Germany, and apparently he's doing the same next season on a one-year loan deal. Next, though, we got to a couple for Rangers, and the two Mexican players. The very first one is at Carlos Pena, a very solid silver on FIFA 17, and apparently in real life has got a nickname to do with Rude Hulle. And that one is from Guadalajara on an undisclosed fee. The next player is also from the Mexican League, and it's Eduardo Herrera, joining Rangers from Pumas or Unam, again for an undisclosed fee. The next one is Gonzalez going to Bologna from Palermo for £1.7 million. And his FIFA card for Normare 77 doesn't look too bad whatsoever on a FIFA 17. He is followed by Berisha, an Albanian goalkeeper going to Atalanta on a permanent basis now from Lazio for £4.52 million. And he spent last season on loan to the club. And another goalkeeper that made a switch yesterday is a guy who went from Newcastle being Matt Sells, who only joined them a year ago from, is it Genk or Ghent? I'm not sure what it is, but he only lost at Newcastle for one year. He didn't really play too much football in the championship and has gone on loan back to Belgium to Anderlecht on a year-long loan. Next up on the final today is a pretty damn big one, and that is Mohamed Salah finally completed his switch to Liverpool from Roma. And in regards to the fee, there's a lot going about. The very first one, according to Liverpool Echo, is £30.8 million, rising to 34.3 after add-ons. But Roma's official announcement does say €42 million, Euros, which is £36.9 million, plus €8 million Euros in additional fees. And with the Liverpool Echo saying £34.3 million, they did say Liverpool insisted that was the price, but Roma, they officially announced 42 so they are probably more reliable on that one. So overall, here's Liverpool's record signing. And finally, after all this time, Andy Carroll is no longer our most expensive signing, which is great to see. And I'm really excited to see how Mohamed Salah fits into our style, as on paper, he's a great fit. I imagine Salah will be on the right-hand side, Firmino down the middle, and Sadio Mane down the left, with Coutinho dropping back to centre midfield, as uh, Sadio Mane before has played the left-hand side for Salzburg, and also Southampton. And I'm pretty sure they all have like three rolls anyway. And potentially for counter attacks next season, that's all really excites me the most because on the counter, no only players will be able to catch up to them. But now we move on to potential deals. And the very first one, technically, it's actually a confirmed one. And that is going to be Patrick Schick. So the Sampdoria player has completed the first part of his medical at Juventus, and that's via their Twitter account. They tweeted out pictures of him having the medical, so probably today, at some point, it'll be all official. And that Juve team seems to be getting better and better every single window. Next up, we go on to Fran de Boer, apparently very close to becoming the Crystal Palace manager. And Sky did tweet out saying Crystal Palace are close to appointing Fran de Boer as their next manager, according to Sky's sources, but it's pretty much according to every source. And he has been into a fair amount of English clubs before, I think Everton were one of them, and I'm pretty sure Liverpool were a few years ago. And next up, we've gone to Will Hughes. So yes, there was mention, apparently going to Watford, and Pretty Sky today has said Watford have a great £7 million deal with Derby for the midfielder, although right now he's currently away on international duty with the England under-21 team. And he seems to have been around for absolutely ages, but apparently he's only 22 years old. Next up, we go on to Adnan Yanazai, and again, according to Sky sources, Manchester United have received a bid of £9.7 million from Real Sociedad in Spain for Yanazai. And I actually saw a really funny tweet regarding this. I'll actually put it on your screen right now. It says, big fan of Adam Yanazai playing for Manchester United, Sunderland, and also now joining Real Sociedad. Like he's on a weird David Moyes tribute tour like that. That tweet absolutely banged. It's on like 22,000 likes already. And it has been like three or four years now since he broke into the United team. And there's a lot of hype bound back then, but now there really isn't too much about him. So maybe Sociedad is a good move for him. Next up, we go on to Ross Barkley, then to Spurs there, according to Sky Sources. Tottenham are prepared to wait for Everton to lower the asking price for Ross Barkley as the transfer window progresses. Spurs are concentrating their early efforts in the market on a replacement for right-back Carl Walker, should he for Manchester City, and new number 10, Ross Barkley, their top target. Sky understand Everton value the 23-year-old at £50 million, despite the fact Barkley has only got one year left in his current contract. 
And he has also indicated he won't be signing a new contract, so maybe Everton will have to load that £50 million, because if not, he'll be a free transfer next summer. And it's definitely best to get some money out of him rather than none whatsoever, especially after they've already bought Klaassen, who apparently was a replacement for him. Next up, we move on to Sandro, linked to Everton today, and Everton is set to complete the signing of the Malaga striker after meeting his £5.2 million buyout clause in his contract. The 21-year-old scored 14 goals in La Liga last season, having joined Malaga from Barca in July 2016. He's currently playing for Spain under-21s at the European Championship in Poland right now. He's already had a medical on Merseyside before the Euros. Everton are now understood to have completed the formalities to finally complete the deal. And 5.2 million pounds for a player scored 14 league goals last season. That's some really good business in my opinion. Next up, we go on to Alberto Moreno. Apparently, Liverpool have rejected a bid of 12.5 million euros or 11 million pounds from Napoli for the left back. Sevilla and two Premier League clubs are currently interested in him. Apparently, Liverpool are holding out for around 15 million pounds. And Damasio actually said a swap deal for Gulam involving Alberto Moreno has not been ruled out after Napoli's reported bid for the Spaniard. And in my opinion, sense back and also left back is the area we need to improve on right now. Next up, we go on to Van Dijk. It was into Liverpool before, but today, according to Tancredi Palmieri and Sky Italia, Chelsea have made a bid of 68 million euros for the defender. But some sites are saying that bid was placed six weeks ago before the whole Van Dijk stuff became public, where apparently he chose Liverpool over City and Chelsea. And Don King has come out and said that Van Dijk still wants to join Liverpool and Klopp still wants the main target. So at this point in time, if Chelsea do put a bid in, it might be too bad for Liverpool because potentially we could use that to actually put our own bid in this time. And especially with a new Southampton manager coming in at some point, Van Dijk, if he doesn't want to stay there, he might decide to sell him for a massive fee and start improving the squad elsewhere. Next up, we go on to Alexandro, linked to Chelsea today again, and the Juventus say they've received a substantial offer for Alexandro and will not prevent the left-back from leaving the club if he wants to. Premier League champions Chelsea have been linked to a move for the 26-year-old Brazil international. Juve signed Sandro for €26 million, Euros, £23 million pounds from Porto in 2015. The chief executive from Juventus called Giuseppe Morata said if a player decides to leave, then at the end of the day, he has to go. And that quote right there could also tie into the Van Dijk stuff. If a player's unhappy or wants to leave, it's pretty best to get rid. And now we've got another Juventus player, and this time it's going to be Dani Alves. So Juventus have confirmed that they'll release Dani Alves from the final year of his contract. Man City boss Pep Guardiola is known to be interested in the 34-year-old who knows from his time at Barca. Speaking to Italian media on Wednesday, chief executive from Juve, Marotta, said that Alves had expressed a desire to try a new experience. Marotta said Juventus hoped to have reached a mutual termination with Alves and he wished the Brazilian good luck for the future. And despite being on a room of £250,000 per week on a free transfer, Alves to Man City, in my opinion, is a very, very good business. Next up, we go on to Gianluigi Donnarumma, and according to AC Milan CEO Marco Fassone, or Fassone, probably said it wrong, he's insisted that Donnarumma will stay at the club next season. The goalkeeper confirmed last week he'd not be renewing his contract at the club, and has been able to move away to Juventus, Manchester United, PSG, and Real Madrid in the European press. Donnarumma's current Milan contract expires in 2018, meaning he could be a free transfer next summer, and there were reports a couple of days ago now saying that potentially he may reconsider and actually sign that contract. That would be a massive U-turn. I'm not sure though if Milan fans would forgive him because let's face it, it didn't go down well whatsoever. In fact, for the Italian under-21s, they were chucking fake money at him. I still think eventually he will end up at Juventus or somewhere like that. And now according to various different sources, Usman Dembele has agreed a five-year deal with Barcelona, but a fee is yet to be agreed to Borussia Dortmund. And in fact, just after this rumour came out, Dortmund responded by saying Barca's interest, there are no negotiations and Dembele will play for Dortmund. And there were reports the other day saying that Barca had opened talks with Dembele's agent, but apparently that was also denied. And the rumoured fee that other day was around £90 million, 9-0, not 19. And the Barca had opened talks with his agent, but apparently again, Dortmund have denied all that. And next up, according to reports in France, says breaking news, AS Monaco and Chelsea have reached a 40 million euro deal in principle for the transfer of Bakayoko. And RMC though are saying that Bakayoko is yet to agree personal terms with Chelsea. And I imagine Chelsea fans at this point just wanted to go through. Next up, we go on to Diego Costa of Chelsea. And apparently yesterday, he told Atletico Madrid he wants to sign for them again. And given the fact he's not part of Antonio Conte's plans for next season, I mean, Atletico can't re-sign a player till January or can't register a player, so maybe they can sign him and loan him out for half the season where then he go to Atletico and be their player. I mean, they might not even loan him out. They could just sign him and uh, pre-keep him in training and whatnot and work with the team. 
and the day Star sent Diego Costa is ready to dig his heels in and stay at Chelsea until he sees his dream move back to Atletico Madrid. And the fun one today is regarding the Wonder Kid, Kylian Mbappe, who currently plays for Monaco. First up, according to Mirror, Paris Saint-Germain have offered Monaco a world record fee of £119 million for 18-year-old striker Kylian Mbappe. The Metro said that Arsenal are preparing a new bid with Arsene Wenger confident a deal can go through. And the young striker is open to the idea of moving to Arsenal. And now this is where Real Madrid come into it. So according to Lequipe today, Mbappe and Zidane met in secret last week, according again to Lequipe. In this meeting, Real Madrid promised Mbappe playing time with one of the major stars set to leave. And other big clubs have now spoken directly to Mbappe on top of Madrid, PSG and Arsenal. So my view on this one, I don't think he'll leave this summer unless it's to one team and one team only, and that is Real Madrid. They've got the funds to do so. I don't think Ronaldo will leave, but potentially if Morata leaves, that's a lot of the overall fee covered right there. I think the rumoured fee for Morata is like £62 million. Obviously, there's some way after 119 or whatever it takes to get Mbappe. But still, it doesn't look as bad, especially. But then you also add on top that the marketing potentially available for Mbappe is absolutely huge. But that is going to be it for today's episode, guys. So as always, if you enjoyed it, show support by leaving a like rating. That'd be absolutely awesome. Remember, 1,000 likes is the title for today's video. If you're new to my channel, make sure to click the subscribe button for daily FIFA content and press the notifications tab next to it to receive notifications about my videos. If you missed yesterday's video, it'll be down below in the description box. And today's question of the day, who is your favorite player to watch when you're growing up? So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.